You're listening to The Real Wealth Show with Kathy Fetke, the real estate investor's resource. Hi, I'm Kathy Fetke. And I'm Rich Fetke. And welcome to The Real Wealth Show. Uh, today, we have another real wealth story for you that we're super excited to share. Yeah, it's really cool. You know, having The Real Wealth Show for so many years, you just never know who's going to be on it that's going to inspire others. And the couple that we're about to interview are just that. They heard another couple from California that got into real estate and have created financial freedom. They were inspired and they took action. They educated themselves and took action. And now they're here today to share their story. So Rachel and Patrick, welcome. Thank Hi. you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks very much. Great to meet you guys. So you uh, wrote a beautiful summary of your experience investing which has been over the past year, probably a year when most people would not be diving into investing. So let's talk about that. What had you decide real estate would be a vehicle for you? Well, you know, um, we were in the middle of a pandemic and working um, pretty tirelessly in the entertainment industry. We lived in Los Angeles. Um, specifically in Santa Monica. I was driving up to Burbank. I worked at Warner Brothers and we were just kind of go, 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 go. And we were on this track and, you know, told, you know, you work your 30 years and you grind and especially in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. Um, So when everything kind of shut down, it's like almost so many other things opened up and I decided to kind of start small and think like, we need to kind of look at our long-term plan and I decided that I would take my commute time, which was 50 minutes each way, um, and dedicate that to figuring out how we can eventually become financially free. Um, I always love to sneak into open houses in Brentwood and Malibu and kind of dream big. Um, Mm -hmm. So that, it really just started small. Um, Yeah, I think, um, you know, and the reason for our our attacking the pandemic the way that we did was was because we had more time on our hands, um, because, Rachel had always loved real estate. I used to be real estate uh, agent here in Boston, where we are now, uh, where we actually came back to for a little bit. So we were already had a sense of comfortability with the, you know, with the space and the industry. And um, for both the both of us, it never really sat right. The idea, like the conventional wisdom of you must work tirelessly for 30 years, save the very best you can. And by that point, you'll be rewarded with either the nest egg you've accumulated or the government assistance through Social Security and whatnot. And um, at least for our generation, we would look around and talk to our friends and, and be like, that's, I don't know if that's going to be waiting for us at the end of uh, the rainbow. So we knew we needed to insulate ourselves. And that's where Rachel really kind of came in and attacked the real estate thing right away. I, she gobbled up your book in, in like one single night and um, and really like, got, us, got us going. So yeah. I love that. It's cool. Well, is he another Boston guy who came to California to meet, meet his uh, California <laughs> <Wow>. woman? <laughs> yeah. It's good. It's, oh, California's yeah. been good to I us. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Excellent. Cool. So, so then what was the next step? I know. So you listened to the podcast, you read Kathy's book cover to cover, and then you just get, you got obsessed with educating yourself, right? got obsessed with educating. Um, I am a very impulsive person. I know a lot, you know, tend to get stuck in the analysis paralysis, but Mm -hmm. I'm the opposite. I'm like, wait, this all makes sense. Let's buy a house today. But, you know, I kind of had to take a step back and, um, you know, there's just so much free material, um, you know, available. We're just so lucky to be in this technological age. I know Kathy touched on that a lot. Like if she had these, if you you had the tools at the mm-hmm. time. Um, so we spent probably two or three months just completely diving into everything we could. And um, we we purchased a home in July. We, mm-hmm. we purchased a new construction, um, three bedroom, two bath in Texas. Um, nice. As a rookie real estate person, we were thinking, okay, well, you know, if the property management team falls apart, you know, we can, we're in California, we can fly there in three hours. Like for now, there's no way we could invest in Florida or something. That's like, it's funny, like in hindsight, just the things that you think of when you're just not really sure what you're getting yourself into. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, we, we purchased the home, we closed in September, we had a tenant um, in by November Mm -hmm. and it's cash flowing almost $400 a month. And 
we purchased the home for 180,000. I'm from San Diego. That's that's non-existent. I didn't know people could buy homes for that much, uh, especially right, maybe a shed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or like two cars for the family. Um, yeah. So I think that's kind of like the quick pace that we we were on. And then when we saw that it it really worked and we felt more comfortable, of mm -hmm. course now we just want to double the portfolio every year. Yeah, that's that's the plan. So. Double the portfolio. Okay, so what what's the end goal? Uh, so I think the end goal is to, uh, of course, maximize our ten loans each. Another little rookie mistake that we we made together, but it's it's not really too big of a deal. We put both of our names on the first loan, and um, now the ones that we're exploring are just going to be my name um, for you know the foreseeable future. And then we're going to use both the ten, and so we're going to have. Um, as many as we can based off of that, but we're really trying to focus on multifamily already as well to maximize the loans. Um, and then by the end of, you know, by the end of the, uh, the those 10 loans each, we want to have, we certainly want to have a million dollars worth of portfolio. We want to have um, upwards of, you know, 30 doors or so. Um, and then at, at that point, we're just going to, I'm sure knowing us, we're going to be like, okay, we checked that box after getting to the end, edge of that goal. Now, like we're going to have brand new goals that we don't, we don't know how to have yet. Um, so that's the exciting part of the whole industry is what we know now we're very focused on, but by the time we get to where we're going, I'm sure there's going to be a whole new um, frontier to be looking forward to and attacking. And um, this is what we want to do. This is our career. I mean, we're, really wow. think of it like that. We have very high demanding jobs in uh, the film industry, uh, which have been our focus since we were teenagers. Um, now that we've kind of achieved that, we've seen how unforgiving it can be and how uh, mm. tiring it can get. I mean, I've, I'm already burnt out at 30. <laughs> I'm and that's, tired. Not, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> so we really think of like real estate as our career and we need to um, consider it so for us to be successful and insulated um, from any of the, the bumps and bruises that come along with, with any career. Don't you wish we had this knowledge when we were 30? <laughs> yeah, the we knowledge. And, uh, you know, I also loved that how you just kind of dove in with the education. It's amazing because there's so much free education out there. And, you know, people will sign up for these, you know, guru courses and everything and spend 20, 30, $40,000 on them. But, you know, you can really educate yourself and put that money toward real estate. Yeah, let me also just add that our investment counselor, Leah College, was, I mean, our like backbone saving grace, uh, never made us feel, you know, insignificant for not knowing something. So honestly, with, with her support, she really just help steer a ship where sometimes it felt a little chaotic and she's just been great. So. Yeah, the network is amazing. Yeah. yeah, she's great. And she was a Real Wealth member. Did she tell you that? Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she bought a whole bunch of properties through our our property teams and everything and then yeah, made that transition. We had her on the investor panel and as soon as she started talking, we thought, Oh my goodness, <laughs> what's it gonna take to to bring her on? She had another job and and then she came to us and looking for for a position. So it, it worked out That's great. Great. I'm glad she's taking good care of you. She's actually a lot like you. Uh, she's young and aggressive and she knew it, you know, they, she and her husband know what they want and they're going for it. Mm -hmm. And even doing, even taking some steps that I wasn't comfortable doing. I, last time I had her on the show, she's like, you know, I'm getting this fourplex. And it was right when things were kind of slowing down. And I just thought, Okay, and of course, it, it, she ended up making up so much money from it. Yeah. Rich and I are like, okay, we've got to, yeah, we got to buy more. Great. And so, when, just to be clear, so when you say multifamily, you're talking like um, duplexes, tries, quads, things like that. Yeah, anything sub five. Um, I mean, we wouldn't say no to um, to anything larger, but we need to be realistic about our reserves and liquidity. I mean, we 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 are, you know, we are compensated pretty well in the entertainment industry, but not to the, to the degree of like, say the folks in Silicon Valley and things like that. So sure. Um, sure. we are really like trying to focus on creative ways and getting into multifamilies, um, which really leads us to what our very near term goals are, which are to owner occupy and use an FHA loan to get into either a quad or a tri or a duplex of course and and um, really start scaling as fast as possible because it's the scaling that will get us to where we need to be 
Yeah, yeah, tell I, us more about that strategy because it's basically a, a house hack, right? You're gonna you want to live in one of the units and then rent the others. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think when we started realizing how powerful real estate investing was, um, you know, we decided we need to really take this even more seriously, mm -hmm. have some difficult conversations and maybe future difficult conversations mm -hmm. with family um, and, you know, some of the sacrifices to get into a more affordable market and, you know, to, to house hack exactly like you said. So um, we're planning that for after our wedding in the fall yes, to yeah. um, potentially move to Florida in 2022 and, um, you know, just to be able to, you know, get rid of this, high price rent we have here in Boston and maybe even be able to cash flow from that property, it'll just help us to kind of domino and move even quicker to our goals. So mm -hmm. we're really excited and feel like we can take off faster going that route. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So smart. you're, you're able to work remotely in your, in your fields. Yes. Yep. As of now. As of now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And we're, we're sort of just um, assuming that that will remain. Uh, I think we're both like a little bit, we're far enough along in our careers where we have enough leverage to say, hey, you know, this works. So, um, yeah. and we've been hearing the same from our companies enough. I mean, it's still old Hollywood run by folks who have been doing it one way for a long time, but we think from what we've been hearing, there's enough encouragement that there could be a world where, um, you know, we live remotely and we have to fly into Los Angeles maybe like once a month for a few yeah. days at a time. and then. And then jet back out. So um, we're hoping that remains as of now for 2021 and looking like into early 22, it can it can be that way. So we really tried to utilize the remote work uh, that's kind of been sweeping the world, honestly. Yeah. It's, it's a great opportunity to be able to house hack in another market. And then if you do have to to move back to a high high price market, you know, the you can do it. But at least you can acquire. Great, great plan. So when you started this journey what was this sort of eye popping moment when you're like oh i get it what, you know, what were the main main points yeah i think um some of the main points that really like dawned on us was that you, once you just once you have the knowledge you're you're free of the shackles of of your conventional wisdom of how you're going to save for retirement i mean i personally i was always bothered by the you know, the mantra of what to do. So knowing that there was another way through real estate, I had grown up around um, family members who had done moderately well with real estate. And my first job out of undergraduate was for a real estate developer in South Boston. Um, and I knew I always liked it. Um, and I knew it could yield high, high paying jobs or financial freedom. So uh, I think really once Rachel came to me and was starting to tell me all the things she was reading and learning because she was the one who really spearheaded everything. I am the one who like had to get right with it, but it didn't take me too long uh, unless you think it took me too long. But Not at all. Uh, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was really like I trust her implicitly and she mm -hmm. came to me with this this plan and, and the enthusiasm um, that you know I, I'd, I'd always seen in her for our regular conventional jobs. Um, so I, I really knew that it was just about the numbers. And as long as the numbers work, it doesn't matter if we're in California, Ohio, or Florida, like the, the numbers add up. So we might as well um, might as well do this. And the re return you can get back on, <laughs> on your money makes way more sense than anything else. And um, so yeah, so I think it was it was mostly Rachel driving the car and uh, and me being in the passenger seat and being like yes let's do it. Um, but now I co -pilot. think co-pilot, yeah, co-pilot, and um, and she still does. I would say the lion's share of all the research and and but we're both like now actively every day talking about um, where the deals are, where we need to go to get them, getting on the phone with folks within the network and trying to find them um, currently. What about the whole out of state investing thing? Was that was there a resistance to that or fear around it? Um, I think maybe initial fear. Um, like I said, just because I'll, I'm the first to admit I am guilty of living in that California bubble from mm -hmm. San Diego, moved two hours away to Los Angeles. Um, you know, my mom's from New York, but besides that, you know, I didn't know really what 
was happening in, in the meat of the country and in Texas. And um, yeah, so we, we have no resistance to flying, renting a car. I mean, we drove like up and down Texas. We met with property management team there, um, you know, and then again, once the numbers made sense, got your insurance in place, mm -hmm. You know, from there, it just felt like not very scary. Of course, we were more comfortable with seeing something sight unseen, but we basically had the money committed before we came to Texas and, and took a look at the property. So um, I think it was just we had to get over that idea of um, I need to physically touch this asset to be able to purchase it. And a, lar a large part of that has to do with the network. I mean, we when we did so much background through the network mm -hmm. and and listening to success stories and um, our investment counselor, Leo, like we mentioned, put us in contact with, with folks who had been successful with this um, Dallas-based company as well. We talked to those folks and we're like, okay, I think we're good. Uh, we don't need to be actively there monitoring the property management, we'll work just fine. Nice, but you have seen your property? Have you seen it and touched it? We yes. did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. It was so nice. Yeah. It was a, uh, it was a good feeling, you know, being so young and again, you know, in California, owning a brand new house is just not typically in the cards. If you know you have just a an entertainment job, middle management. <laughs> yeah, we should have taken pictures. We didn't take pictures, and that was a mistake because oh, we, well, <laughs> right I know. we took like, of course, like uh, you know, as it was being finished, pictures, but not like us, like. You know, in yeah, front of yeah. Like, you can yeah. always go back. I was gonna say you got to go back. <laughs> but, or two but, will have keys and the photo up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a time to jump in, though. Really, like going back to that moment when you were looking into into real estate. It was a time when the economy was shut down, even in Texas, for the you know not completely, but we had eviction moratoriums. We had headlines coming out saying there was going to be a long depression ahead, that there was going to be massive foreclosures. I mean, what got you over that? <laughs> yeah, I think um, we saw it as an opportunity. Uh, and we knew that there's, a, we figured that there was so many investors across the nation, never mind the world, who have are ahead of us. And um, we're both a little impatient. We're both pretty self-critical about ourselves and where we are. And we're like, we gotta, we gotta go, we gotta get ahead. And I think the, the pandemic was like, this is our opportunity. Everything is slowed down. We've been given back more time. We can educate. And if it's um, frightening people out of the market, then even better, like, let's, let's go. Like we know a real estate hard asset is likely to appreciate more than depreciate over time. It was certainly over the 30 years that, that we're going to um, hold. So I think it was, we saw it as like, great, everybody's getting out of the pool. Well, let's jump in the pool while everybody's getting out. Uh, so I think that was the really like the baseline of why we were so excited to, to get in and, and to reclaim our lives. I mean, we spend a, a lot of time devoted really like 11, 11 hour days, definitely working uh, in, in entertainment. So wow. to have a prospect on the horizon, let's say if you do it right, 10 years down the line where you can be up out of there and just working real estate where we knew it didn't matter the circumstances around the pandemic, we just needed to begin. And it's also something for us and our future family. So I right. think just the perspective is a little different as well. Yeah, I was curious about that. What is, which I didn't really see the bottom line, like what your why is, what's your why behind all this? I would say we are both entrepreneurial at heart. I mean, my father, my father was a, uh, is a restaurateur. He's got one single pizzeria on Cape Cod that I grew up working in. And he came to every little league game of mine, every single, you know, school play, every, you know, my parents were there for everything. And uh, that's, probably my most implicit uh, why is because I got to get out from under corporate America. I mean, it's great. And there's a lot of benefits and fulfillment I get from it. But, um, you know, it, it'll, it, could, it, it could drop me at any moment. And it also demand I be, you know, on site for X amount of filmmaker calls and, and meetings and things like that, and which are somewhat exhilarating, but extremely time consuming. And I, I, you know, I think we're both like family focused. And although we don't have, uh, we haven't started our family yet, like we want to make sure that we are 
children will never struggle and we'll set them up and we'll teach them how to do this and it, it will be a generational thing for us. Nice. Living life on your own terms. <laughs> like it. Exactly. exactly. What about you, Rachel? Same? Same, you know, um, just trying to buy back that time. I mean, you know, there's just such a short window you have and, you know, we just want to maximize the time that we do have while we're able to travel. And I sound like I'm going to pull out a walking stick soon, but, you know, we <laughs> see the world. Yeah. And yeah, as Patrick said, I mean, it's really just on someone else's own terms, um, especially in the studio system with with layoffs and, you know, all the headlines surrounding that. Um, it's right. just, it's exciting to think that we're building our business for mm -hmm. our family and creating generational wealth. I mean, those are things that really mean a lot to mm -hmm. us. Nice. Yeah, it's so great that you can take advantage of you both working and being able to get the, the as many loans as you can. And for, yeah. for our listeners who are new to that, you can qualify for up to 10 conventional loans at these ridiculously low rates. Um, what's exciting for you two is that, with all of that real estate, you might be able to have enough tax benefits that one of you can step away when the babies come along and you won't be, your income won't change that much. It just won't be going to the IRS as much. <laughs> It'll be going more into your pocket. I mean, have you, have you learned very much about the tax benefits of being a real estate professional? Yeah, a little bit here and there, right? I mean, we, we, this first was our first year kind of, our um, first depreciating, yeah. uh, <laughs> so tax I, so that was yeah. like a learning curve, but, um, you know, we, we, we got with a professional and was able to write off, uh, a couple of our, our, uh, two of our trips, I guess, last year yeah. that we were doing scouting and other elements like that. So a, a little bit is the answer, but we're learning more. I mean, there's just so many reasons to <laughs> invest in real estate, just limitless. Right. Yeah. The taxes are for sure one of them. And we'll be writing off everything we can. And uh, we, you know, we were looking at tax liens and things like that uh, last week to just figure out how to get the, the deals. Because of course the inventory is, is I, I don't know if it's a record low because we haven't been doing this that long, but it, it feels to us like it's, at a, at tight. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we're going to see them on a stage soon to <laughs> invest in real estate. Yeah, when we get live events going again. <laughs> yeah, we love well, we love getting on planes, as we mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. And then you, in your write up, you said something about that you guys are both savers. So tell us more about that. Yeah, um, I think both of us come from parents that just would constantly save. I mean, I remember my mom saying, like, let's go to the mall to, like, get a good workout in. And I was like, what does that mean? Like, are we going to go shopping? She's like, no, 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 we're going to window shop. We're going to, like, walk all, all the way down the mall and all the way back. And, you know, it's just always that mentality to, for at least, actually, mm -hmm. no, you grew up with that, too, mm -hmm. is just to save the majority and then your expenses. Like, the fun is, like, a a special treat mm -hmm. um, maybe at the end of the month or the end of the quarter. Um, I kind of feel that way. Like if you're treating yourself every week to something, it kind of loses its specialness. That's just kind of for sure. yeah. how it was for, for me. So yeah, we just, we just pour into the savings. And mm -hmm. now that we have our real estate business, it's like, we really have that why as you were saying. Mm -hmm. And now we really just try to make the appropriate sacrifices everywhere we had you know, before we left Los Angeles, um, I sold my I sold my car. Rachel sold hers, um, partly because of the the remote work and everything like that. But you know, we had like we had an Audi and a BMW, and we were like, we don't need this. And, and, and that was before we came to real estate. We were just I, I think it was nice to to have those things and to be like, like we're we're achieving something. But now with the real estate influence, we're like, what are we doing in this apartment right now? We're paying like you know a, a few thousand like. Three thousand dollars a month in this Boston apartment, which mm -hmm. to some people, are like, yeah, of course, it's natural. In other parts of the country, they want to vomit, and we want to vomit, <laughs> and we're like, we need to really like scale back. And do we need this new couch that we had planned to come in? No, so we sent it back, and like we're really trying to pare down, pare down, pare down to be a light on our feet uh, for when we have to do moves, but also just to keep our savings intact. I think us too, like leaving Los Angeles, it was you know, leaving a lifestyle, you yeah. know, I, I didn't, uh, you know, walk straight into an Audi dealership and say like, I'm leasing this car today, but oh, you know, you kind of just your environment that you're in sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, 
persuades you to make certain decisions. So um, again, I think just now focusing really deeply in, into what we really care about um, is what we are going to continue to do. I mean, yeah, we sold like $5,000 worth of our furniture and we shipped boxes via Greyhound bus. I mean, we, we did like the absolute least expensive way to get cross country to live with his parents for, you know, just saving up even more reserves. So, um, you know, we're just trying to be as like scrappy as possible yes, because, yeah. you know, we have a, a bigger, a bigger dream in mind. Beautiful. I love that. It's kind of like um, we, one of the first books we read uh, was The Millionaire Next Door. Mm -hmm. And the idea of that book, if you haven't read it, is that you wouldn't know your next door is a millionaire because the, that person probably drives an old truck and wears clothes. Like, you know, they're they're spending their money they're frugal. on frugal. Yeah, yeah, frugal. They're mm -hmm. investing it. Uh, so great. All right. Well, any last tips to our members who maybe are on the fence or just starting out? What would you say? I mean... I think Nike just do it. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> definitely, definitely just do it. Take the plunge, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, even if your first deal isn't everything that you mm -hmm. dreamed of and more, luckily it kind of was for us. Um, you know, just just putting in the energy into what you want in your future. For us, that was like our first door, and you know, that first one is just going to catapult you to do the next ten. Yeah, and I, I always feel for folks of our generation um, because you know you, you read everything about how they think they're not going to ever own a house they're just going to keep renting and uh, <laughs> instead they're they're leaning on things like crypto and stocks and I, I would advise to really you know educate get enough knowledge and try to dive into real estate because the minute that we had enough base knowledge and felt comfortable we're like this is it there's nothing else so there's no analysis by paralysis it's just attack and now we're in like heavy attack mode and like bugging people across the network constantly to help us find deals and, <laughs> and uh, you're poor property managers <laughs> yeah yeah in this market yeah. so awesome. i love it you're on a good path yeah. thank you yeah we hope so all right well thank you so much for sharing with us here on the real wealth show and i really look forward to having you back in a year or two and uh seeing where you're at at that point we can't wait. <laughs> yeah, we I don't think it'll be with a walker. <laughs> Maybe a little baby. All right. And congratulations on your on your upcoming wedding. I'm Thank you so much. much. Yes. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you for having us. Yeah. I, I hope you All get right. to have people there at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's outside, you know, it's it's a small wedding, so it'll be yeah. cute and quaint. It's in Paso Roblo, so not too far from y'all. Oh, oh, wonderful. Great. All right. Take care. Thanks right. so much All for being here. All the best, you guys. Thank you. And thank you for joining us here on The Real Wealth Show. You can go to realwealthshow.com for hundreds of webinars and lots of free information on different markets and the teams that we recommend in those markets that can help you buy your first rental property or your tent. <laughs> <laughs> see you. All right. We'll see you next time. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are provided for informational purposes only and should not be construed as an offer to buy or sell any securities or to make or consider any investment or course of action. For more information, go to realwealthshow.com.